Hi, I'm Kirk Bevins, and you're listening to the Weekly Darts Cast 177. Hello, and welcome to a bonus episode of the Weekly Darts Cast, sponsored by Dart Wolf. I'm Alex Moss, and alongside me, my co host, Dart Statistician Burton DeWitt. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Just enjoyed a nice uh, Premier League final. Uh, how are you doing, Alex? I'm doing good, thank you. Yeah, we're recording this just moments after Michael Van Gerwen beat Joe Cullen 11 10 in what we were just talking about off air. He's got to be leading the contender for match of the year so far this year. Wins his title with a sixth Premier League title for Michael Van Gogh and equals Phil Taylor's record. And although we're not going to see him at the World Cup this week, he's having surgery. What does this win do for Michael Van Gogh and the dying landscape? Well, it definitely shows that he might not be back to where he was at his best. And I've probably a broken record saying that this year, but it shows that he's closer than he has been. And there were some moments across the two matches, obviously when he was facing a match start in the final uh, where he was vulnerable, but by and large, his game is where it was. He just is making, having too many poor visits uh, summed up best by that start of the 20th leg when he was throwing for the match took three visits to get under 400 and was still over 200 after 15 darts when Cullen completed the break. Beyond that, there's a lot of signs that it is getting back. His double, oh, sorry, his treble 19 shooting, especially in key moments, uh, was incredible. In the semifinal, that's where he pulled away from Wade in the after the break was whenever he switched down to triple 19, he hit it. And that's what he did at his best. He was the world's, I mean, he was the, at his best, he was the world's best, everything. But he was far and away the world's best treble 19 hitter four or five years ago. We saw flashes of that, of that against Wade. We saw moments of brilliance, obviously being able to break to go 10-9 up and some just key finishing. And if he's able to do that more consistently and he's able to get rid of the poor visits, those kicking off legs with 42, the 58s, uh, when – he's trying to punish, he will be, if not averaging 105 like he used to, close enough to that that he's going to pick up more titles than he has been. But he's picked up six already this year, and there's still half the year to go. And if you look at the televised events, there's more than half the year to go. Most of the televised events are in the back half of the year. So getting back to double digits seems like that's realistic. And yes, that's a decrease from the 20 he used to have, but hitting double digits is what the world number one should be aiming for. And I know he's not the world number one, but if he keeps picking up 10 titles a year, he will be, if not after the world championships, sometime next year, because next year he's defending nothing. And if he wins the world title this year, that makes up the difference between him and current world number one, Peter Wright. I'm not yet ready to say he's currently the best player in the world. I'm not even yet ready to say he's currently on current form, the second best player in the world. I think Michael Smith... And Johnny Clayton still have him beat on that because of the consistency that they've played at for Johnny Clayton for over a year for Michael Smith for the last month, month and a half after his post UK Open uh, mini slump. But Michael Van Gerwen is close to them. And if he comes back from the surgery, and don't forget that he won this title injured, if he comes back from the surgery just a little bit more consistent than he uh, went into it. Uh, then, yeah, I think the darting landscape will be Michael Van Gogh back at the top sooner than what we would have thought just a few months ago. Yeah, it's uh, an important night, I think, for Michael Van Gogh's career, and especially the Premier League as well. It's a, a tournament which, since he's come into it, he's had a, a lot of success in, and it is one of those tournaments which does dominate the calendar in the PDC. It goes on for three or four months, and when you're getting all those wins against your fellow pros, against your fellow top players at, at that elite level, it does say a lot about who is the best player in the world. And for Michael Van Gogh in the last couple of years, we've not seen him win this Premier League title. We saw him win it four years in a row, 2016 to 2019, and that put him on five Premier League titles. And it was just, I think, for a lot of people, a matter of when, not if, he would get to six titles and, and equal Phil Taylor's record. And it took him a little bit longer than I think a lot a lot of people expected back then. If you'd have said it in 2019, you'd have had to wait another three years to get that Premier League because back then he was the, the best player in the world. And, and since then, 
his ranking, his stature in the game has, has dropped. He's dropped down the rankings, of course, lost that world number one spot. He's world number three at the moment. And before tonight, didn't have a major title, didn't currently hold a, a major title. And it's been a, a few years since he's won one of, what, one of these, what you'd call a, a major title, the 2020 Players' Championship Finals when he beat Mervyn King in that memorable final at the end of that year. So it's been over a year since he's had his name on one of these big titles. And the Premier League, they don't get much bigger. I think if you ask all the players to win a Premier League, it, it does mean a, an awful lot besides winning the, the World Championship and maybe the World Match Play. But yeah, to, to get a Premier League title is, is big for him. And he, he did have some sticky moments in there in, in the final, going 10-9 up. And, and what a leg to go 10-9 up to break. It looked like it was going to go with throw the whole way through, especially towards the end of that game. But at 9 all brings out that that 12 dart leg, the 92 finish, the, the one dart double, that clutch finishing, which when MVG is at the top of his game, we see those finishes time and time again. And yeah, to, to come out in that 20th leg with the throw and just throw a bag of nails, if you like, what, like uh, what I'd do on a Wednesday night, no trebles in sight. And Joe Cullen gets the, the throw back, throws first in the decider and kicks off with a, a 140. MVG returns with that 140 and gets the, the double 14 with his, his first dart. Joe missing that one dart to uh, to win it on the double 16. But that, a little bit of luck there towards the end. But for Michael Van Gerwen, it's a, it's a, an important win and we'll see him come back after his surgery. But I think he'll come back, even if he has this little break now, probably a little bit fresher, but also with a, a lot of confidence behind him now that he could maybe pick up a lot more big titles this year. Well, you mentioned that one dart at double 16. It meant an agonizing defeat for Joe Cullen as he missed that dart just on the outside of the wire. Uh, had it gone in, he would have won the Premier League on debut. Uh, but what has this Premier League campaign showed to you about Joe Cullen as a darts player? It wasn't quite the six match starts we saw from Peter Wright in, in 2017 to beat Michael Van Gogh in the Premier League final. But you could tell from the, the post-match interview and, and afterwards how disappointed Joe Cullen was that was literally the only thing he could say was that he was gutted he was devastated not to win the title and I I think that probably shows more than anything how far Joe Cullen's come in in the last six months or so since winning the Masters at the start of the year and and getting in this Premier League and it's not been a easy first season for Joe Cullen he's been very honest in his assessment in his performances sometimes you know he's he's averaged in in the 80s the, the low 90s and there's been nights where he has been blown away and he, he's not produced anywhere near his A game, but he did get to the, the finals and the, the way he got to it as well mirrored what we saw from uh, Johnny Clayton uh, last year, winning that last game or getting the result that he needed in that last game on the last night to get through. And even the, the week before winning the title as well, put him in that winner takes all, put him in, in such a good position and to beat Peter Wright six out of six on that double 16 in that game to get through to the, the playoffs on debut was some effort. And even he will say he didn't play his best during the season, but he has ground out a, a lot of wins during that time. And I think it was Mark Webster said it on the commentary tonight that Joe Cullen has found a B game that works, that gets results. And as, as much talent as, as Joe Cullen has, if you're not producing your A game and your B game is, is nowhere near your A game and this nearer to your C or D game, then you're not going to get as many wins as maybe you would like. So for him to find that B game, I think has been a, a big part of this year, this Premier League, and to get those wins against the, the top players and to play in front of these big crowds, I think that has done a lot for Joe Cullen's game. And he's had that match start, just missed out on the double 16 to win the whole thing, even though he's missed out on the title tonight. And it's probably going to take him a, a little bit of getting over to miss out on winning such a big title. I think he will be, when he looks back on it a little bit later, I think he will say, you know what, I've done pretty well for my first season in the Premier League. And it probably won't be the last. I think we will see him plenty of times in this Premier League now. He's shown that he can produce the goods. He is competitive in, in this field, in this elite field. And yeah, I, I think we're going to see him, like a lot of the other players now, battle for these majors for the rest of the year. Ooh, I, I mean, I hope we see him again, but I, I, I don't know. It's so hard to predict and form is so fickle. Uh, from what we saw tonight uh, and what we saw throughout most of the Premier League campaign, he deserves... To be in the to be in consideration to get back in again, and if he plays like he did at the Masters and he plays like he did on finals night at 
I was about to say the O2. It wasn't at the O2 this year at the Mercedes-Benz Arena in Berlin. Uh, he will be back in it again next year or pretty soon because that level will make televised finals and will sometimes win it. And, well, he was a dart away and a well-thrown dart away from winning this title. And what we saw from him on finals night is what I want to talk more about because we've talked especially the last couple of weeks. Uh, but over the course of the year, we have talked about Joe Collins' Premier League campaign a bit. And we heard from Christopher Kemp, who brought in statistically um, the negatives. But the positives, I think, outweigh the negatives. And that's his ability to find ways to win matches, even when he's not playing well. And that's what you commented on, his B game or even his C game um, sometimes, able to win with that. And he did not used to have that. Last year, I think we really saw an increase um, in the level of his B game and in his ability to grind out wins when he wasn't on his best. And that's what put him in a position to have the confidence that he needed to cross the line in the Masters. And obviously, he showcased it all throughout this Premier League campaign. That's why he got into the playoffs. And he's become a really good grinder. What we didn't see this Premier League is what – I kept saying what I thought we would, and we almost saw it. We definitely saw it, I think, the second half of the match against Johnny Clayton, but not the full match. We did not see a full match of Joe Cullen at his best. And even still, he came within a millimeter of winning the title. Joe Cullen has so much upside that we still haven't seen from him. We've seen when we we've seen him learn how to win matches, and that's great. But we haven't seen him really dominate like he can and like he has before. At times, obviously, what separates the greatest players of all time from someone like what we've seen from Joe Kahn before, it's not just, you know, being able to dominate, but able to dominate for an entire tournament. That's obviously the next step. But we want to I want to see Joe Cullen be able to bring that A game more often. Winning with a B game is great and it might win him a title. It's one James Wade. God knows how many titles over the course of his career. But being able to win with your B game is one thing. Being able to win with your A game and to bring your A game more often is another. And that's what the greatest players do. And we didn't quite see that from Joe Collin this tournament. But again, we almost didn't need to. And we'll come on to talk about which players we think might be in the Premier League next year. We're going to get that conversation going pretty early in a, in a moment. But let's talk about a player that we did see in the Premier League this year. And there's been a little bit of talk about him considering he's just made a final on the World Series at the weekend in the Nordic Darts Masters, which was won by Dimitri van der Berg, but a lot of people wondering, are we going to see Gary Anderson in the Premier League again? What do you reckon? I think he has work to do. And as opposed to previous years, obviously when it was 10-man field, it was easier to get it. Now with an eight-man, it's even more difficult. And it felt like Gary Anderson was given the berth this year as a, not as a farewell, but as a, if you don't put up this is your last go. He was clearly the last person in, and he got in ahead of a major champion in Rob Cross, and we'll come on to that in a second about who's going to be in next year. But does Gary Anderson get for the second year in a row ahead of a major champion like possibly Danny Noppert, or we'll see who wins the rest of this year, if he hasn't done anything over the course of the year? I think the answer is no. Even though this is an exhibition, even though this is about uh, – growing the sport and marketing the sport, Gary Anderson's performances by and large were not up to that level. They were closer to the level we saw from Raymond Van Barneveld in his farewell season than from what we had seen from Gary Anderson in the past. So there's still plenty of time left in this year. And if this past weekend is anything to go by, Gary Anderson still has a lot of uh, gas left in the tank and a lot of fight left to give. Uh, but he needs to do that more often. He only won or even made the final of one Premier League night, the same amount that he did for this past World Series. So if this season's been anything to go by, that seems like it's more likely that Copenhagen was a one-off. But we'll see. If Gary Anderson wins the match play or if he wins uh, – I was about to say the European Championship. We know he won't be in that. But if he wins the Grand Slam, assuming he gets into it, or something else over the course of the remaining six months on television or makes a couple finals, then yeah, I think he can play himself back in. But right now I think he's out. Right now I think there are at least eight people who the PDC – not – I, but the PDC would put in ahead of him. And that's what matters. And as long as there's eight people that the PDC will put in ahead of him, then no, he's not in. And as of right now, I think that's the case. Put this out as one of our questions of the week a few weeks ago. Now, I was just looking back to see what the, the final vote was on that. We asked our listeners, will we see Gary Anderson 
in the Premier League again, and we had almost 400 of you vote for that, and 17% going with yes, 83% going with no. So the majority saying that we're not going to see Gary Anderson in the Premier League again. And the last couple of seasons that we have seen Gary Anderson play in the Premier League, 2021, he survived elimination, but finished bottom of the players that played the whole season, finished eighth. And this year with the eight players instead of 10, finished eighth in that one as well. And it's, uh, yeah, at this point in the year, given what we've seen so far, I think it is a difficult argument to say that Gary Anderson's name alone is his star power, if you like, is, is going to get him in that eight player lineup next year. But what you could say is that if you're comparing him to different players, the the level, the achievements that he's probably got to get over the next six months are going to be less than some other players, given that he's naming the game and the popularity that he still commands among darts fans. So, yeah, there is a lot of darts still to be played this year and we are going to see Gary in a, a lot of the events, the, the World Series events, which are, of course, televised. They're going to make a difference. We're going to see him in almost all of the majors. We won't see him, as you say, in, in the European Championship. The Grand Slam still got to sort that qualification out. But, you know, we're going to see a lot more of him this year and it's up to him now if, if he can put in a, a good couple of runs. And he's been in this position a, a few times before in the, in the last couple of years where he's not been... Uh, you know, in the mix, you know, he still had work to do. And a couple of years ago, got to the World Match Play final, got to the World Championship final. Even last year, I, I don't think he was close to the Premier League going into the World Championship. And he has a, a good run, gets to the semi finals and had that great game with, with Peter Wright in the semi finals. I think that was what got him over the line, got him into that eight player lineup. But yeah, I think at, at this moment in time, it is difficult to say Gary Anderson is, is, a, is a definite for the Premier League next year. But We'll see a lot more of him. We're going to see if he if he's up for it as well. We, we may see him at the end of the year say, you know what, that's it. I don't think we're going to see Gary Anderson say, I'm going to have this next year. That's going to be my farewell year like Phil Taylor did and like Raymond Van Barneveld did before he decided to come back. I think Gary Anderson will maybe will do it with a, a little less fuss and will maybe say at the end of a world championship, you know what, that's my lot. I'm going to call it a day and we'll see. But yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with, with the majority for now. I'm going to say that we won't see Gary Anderson in the Premier League again. Well, let's talk about the, who we think we will see in the Premier League next year. Barry Hearn, of course, recently said on this show that the new format will stay for next year, uh, which means eight players. Uh, but what about the lineup? Uh, anyone that missed out this year that you fancy to get in next year? Before play started in the playoffs, I was looking at the post-World Championship order of merit and looking at players that are going to be high up in the rankings. Of course, there's a, a lot of big events still to play. So that list is going to change before then. But at the moment, you've got Peter Wright, number one, going Price, Michael Smith, Michael Van Gogh, James Wade, Rob Cross, Johnny Clayton, Luke Humphreys. And I'd probably say it won't be far off that at, at this moment in time. And I know you mentioned him, Danny Nopper, the UK Open champion. I'd love to see him get a, a crack at the Premier League. But is he the most fancied player in world darts at the moment among the, the more casual fans? Is he going to get people to come to the, the big arenas compared to maybe other players? I think that is a question. And we've seen players in the past win major titles, Paul Nicholson, Co Stompy, and, and they didn't get in the Premier League. And even more recently, Rob Cross as well. So there has been a, a case in, in recent years where even if you do win a, a major title like the UK Open, like one of the other TV titles, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you that spot in the Premier League and even now with it being cut from 10 to 8 players I think looking at those 8 players that I listed a moment ago the two that could get back in Rob Cross we've seen him get to a few finals on the Euro Tour I think we need to see him do it a, a bit more in the TV events I think in the second half of the year maybe become a I've lost count now is it a 4 hit wonder 5 hit wonder but maybe do that Luke Humphries I think he is the name to watch at the moment we've seen him win a couple of Euro Tours and We've seen him in the past have some deep runs on TV, so we, we know he can, we know he's capable of, of doing those deep runs. And I think it'd be a brave man to back against him making quarterfinals, semi-finals in, in TV events in in the second half of the year. So I think Luke Humphries is, is a name to watch. Joe Cullen after tonight. I don't know if I'd have kept him in after making the playoffs, but I think getting that close to winning the title, if he can dust himself down and, and have a good second half of the year, I think he's right in the mix as well. So for me, those are the the names I'm looking out for. Maybe some other names in there as well. We've just seen Dimitri Vandenberg win his first World Series title and he was probably one of the most unlucky people not to get in that lineup this year. So I, I think he's in, in with a shout as well and he's, I think there was a stat doing the rounds from Darts Oracle about how well 
Dimitri has been playing on TV for the last 12 months. So if he can keep that up and maybe add another title or two, I think he's going to be well in the mix as well. So yeah, like, like we keep saying, there's a, a lot to still to, to play this year, that the world match play being one of the next big ones. But that, that back end of the year, when it comes to the world championship, I think you can say any of the players in that field have got a shot of getting in the Premier League. They win the world championship, make a final, semi-final, maybe a bit less than that quarter final. They are in with a, a shout of getting in that Premier League. So a lot is weighted on that world championship. But for a lot of these players, there is a, a lot of chances now win one of those major titles and it will put you right in contention of getting in that Premier League. I more or less agree with everything you said. And I'll, I'll take it from a slightly different uh, starting point. But I think obviously Michael Van Gurren is now in. Um, <laughs> obviously a lot this show. I noticed that. But I think there's been a lot of obvious things that came out of tonight. And one of them is Michael Van Gurren as Premier League champion will be in. Peter Wright, Gurren Price, Michael Smith will be in as well. Even if they're no longer in the top four at the end of the year. Well, Peter Wright will certainly be in the top four at the end of the year. I think that Gurren Price and Michael Smith, based on what we've seen from them this year, will be. But even if they're not, um, I think they will be in the Premier League next year because they're two of the leading faces. And Michael Smith right now is the best player in the world. Uh, But that leaves four spots that are still to play for. And there's a lot to go on, a lot still to go. Right now, I would go in a slightly different uh, direction. I would I think James Wade would be left out, even though he made the semifinals. And I think the next four in the rankings uh, would get in as based on those end of season rankings. You mentioned three of them, Cross, Clayton, and Humphreys. But I think Knoppert as UK Open champion will get in, and I'll explain why. Even though you look back, Rob Cross was left out as a major champion. It left out as a very recent major champion. The European Championship is in October, November. The UK Open is in February, March. So that's a big gap in the year. But if you remember for Rob Cross, Rob Cross was coming off of a Premier League campaign in which he was relegated, which was one year after another Premier League campaign, which he was relegated. So two years in a row, he had finished ninth in the Premier League. And while he's still one of the leading players in world darts, he was probably the next person out because we've seen him play the Premier League so much recently and he hadn't done well in it. Danny Knoppert's never been given a ch- chance before. So I think as of right now, Danny Knoppert is in, and that's where I separate Rob Cross getting left out last year from where Danny Knoppert is right now. It doesn't mean Danny Knoppert will still be in. There's still a lot of events to go in only a few spots. If we keep seeing people win majors who haven't been in, maybe Knoppert will be left out. But as of right now, I think he's in. The other person who's Right there in the conversation is the last person you touched on, Dimitri Vandenberg. He just won a World Series event. He's made a Euro Tour final very recently. He's taking steps every single week right now. And even though his ranking is set to go down a little bit because he's defending World Match Play Championship money uh, in a little over a month's time, from what I've seen from him in the last month, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he defended that. And even if he didn't, if he somewhere at the back end of the year did the equivalent of defending that. Because even if he doesn't defend his the world match play title, if he wins the Grand Slam, if he wins the Players' Championship, that's almost exactly the same thing. It's a little bit less because the world match play slightly more money. But it's, for all intents and purposes, the same as defending it. And he's playing well enough. I think Dimitri Vandenberg right now is outside because of making two major finals last year wasn't enough, winning a... Uh, World Series event wouldn't either, but he's in the conversation and I would expect him to get louder in that conversation the way he's playing. Anything else for, well, I won't say this week because we have another episode coming up, uh, but anything else for this uh, mini episode? Just to say, as always, uh, thanks to everyone for listening. There's so much darts this week that, as you mentioned, we are going to be back again with another episode before the World Cup, which starts on Thursday we've got four possibly five guests coming on so it's going to be a busy one to get you ready for the World Cup so yeah not much time as as you would say to hang tight but there's plenty of darts on this week for you to enjoy so enjoy the darts. Yeah well I won't even say my saying because as you said there is no time for that this week (laughs) so don't don't do it if you do it you're going to miss some darts and you should be enjoying the darts with maybe taking about an hour off from enjoying the darts to listen to our World Cup preview, which will be hitting uh, in a couple days. Until then, uh, just keep enjoying the darts. It's one heck of a week.